A champion will be crowned tonight in men's college basketball. We're getting the rare one featuring two one seeds, Gonzaga and Baylor, each seeking their first title in program history. Ninth meeting between one seeds in the national championship game since seeding began in 1979. These are the two teams we thought would get here midway through this crazy 2020 slash 21 season. Heavy money on Gonzaga futures, so much so William Hill put up a Gonzaga and Baylor versus the field prop. Hope you took Baylor and Gonzaga. <laughs> the Zags are favored by four and a half. The total sits at 159 and a hook. If that total gets to 160 or higher, 160 specifically to be tied for the third highest total in national championship game since 1990. UNLV Duke in that year closed at 182. And I mentioned this will be the ninth time one seeds have faced each other in the final. Each of the previous eight were decided by single digits. Six of those eight, including the past five, were decided by five to nine points. All right, let's go to Indy. Say good morning to our crew, Avery Johnson and Matt Norlander, up early. I know that they're going to be staying up late like the rest of us for this one. So, Matt, I'll start with you first here. Again, why Baylor and Gonzaga is so compelling in a matchup here that many of us thought would happen during the season. Listen, this is the championship game that we deserve. This is after this, you know, pandemic riddled season when there was so much uncertainty, so many postponements, cancellations, COVID pauses. You know, Baylor Gonzaga, those were the two teams identified November, December, January. The games that we hoped, the game we hoped we would see in this spot. And we were never guaranteed it. But the fact that we get not just these two teams, the first, to, for the first teams to match in the title game. As one seeds, number one and number two overall in the seed list since 05, North Carolina, Illinois. It's been 16 years. And it's the first time since 2001 that the preseason one and two are facing off in the final game of the season. And how about this? Their combined win percentage of .967. It's the greatest combined win percentage in a championship game ever. This is a wonderful treat for college basketball. We deserve this kind of matchup here. We'll have to wait and see how exactly the game's gonna play out, but going in, this does set up to me to be one of the uh, most interesting and, and highest stakes tilts in, in championship game history, particularly because Gonzaga's undefeated. Avery, your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, and I, I just think, Matt, I agree with everything you said. But also, I think this is a celebration of patience of two different administrations. We're in a culture now where coaches go to the Final Four, and then a year or two later, they bounce to another school, maybe even in the conference. But now we have two coaches, Coach Few, Coach Drew, that have been g given a, a time to really establish their culture. They didn't leave for the next high hot job, whether it's in conference or out of conference. They they sustain their culture. They recruited the type of players that fit in their system. So I'm really excited about how patient both of these administrations are celebrating two outstanding coaches that have tried to test of time. They've developed some amazing players. Their players love them. They've sent a lot of players to the NBA. A lot of those guys have graduated from both Gonzaga and Bale and gone on to do amazing things. So I think this is just a celebration of two coaches that have remained in their programs and not been lured away, Matt, from other great opportunities at other schools. And we just showed that graphic there, the fifth national championship game between top two teams in the AP preseason poll. By the way, the preseason number two, which in this case is Baylor, won each of the previous four matchups. All right, time to get in those matchups here. And Avery, this one's for you specifically. Why do you think Baylor's depth as well as Davion Mitchell's defense will be very key tonight? Well, when you look at Baylor's depth, it's, it's truly amazing. Uh, their big three that comes off the bench led by Flagler and Mayer. You know, those guys... 25 points off the bench, you know, in, in there against Houston. A game against Wisconsin, 24 points off the bench. Harford, 25 points off the bench. So it seems like it's either been 24, 25 points off the bench, and that's what they're going to need tonight against Gonzaga. While teams are obviously focused on Jared Butler's three-point shooting, I think their depth is much more of an impact on this game tonight than Gonzaga's depth. And then when you look at Davion Mitchell's defense, 
Man, he's my Kyle Lowry of college basketball. This kid is unbelievable. And then when he's shooting the ball and making some threes, I think it's over. You know, he had a double-double in the semifinal. He's going to be matched up with Suggs. This is pay-per-view type TV to watch Davion Mitchell guard Jalen Suggs. So I think those are the two key uh, reasons why Baylor has a chance to upset Gonzaga tonight. And Mitchell was named the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year last Friday, announced right here on CBS Sports HQ. Matt, for you, the Mark Vidal Drew Timmy matchup is something that's catching your eye. How so? Well, yeah, Davion Mitchell's the defensive player of the year, but if we had uh, all defensive teams, a first team, second team, Mark Vidal is all defensive second team in all of college basketball. At worst, might even be all defense first team. He is that good of a player, Avery. And, and to me, what he might be able to do against Drew Timmy, I think, is I think it's huge in this game. I mean, Timmy has had more than 20 points in four straight games at better than 50% shooting. The only players in the past 25 years who have done that in this tournament, Zion Williamson and Blake Griffin, they both went number one in the draft. Drew Timmy's not going to go number one in the draft, but I do think if he can have success against Vital, it's going to be extremely significant for Gonzaga. And, but don't under... I think this could... Could. If we're talking later on this evening about Baylor having won the national championship and given Gonzaga its first loss, you know, the fact that Gonzaga losing, that would be the biggest headline. But one of the things that might cause that is, is Mark Vidal having an outstanding defensive effort and becoming, you know, kind of an unsuspecting star in this spot. He is the spiritual soul of that defense. Mitchell's the best player, but Vidal goes one to five. He can guard anyone, and I would think he'll be for most of the night probably, and how successful he can be in this spot could go a long way to determining if Baylor can win the game. And to piggyback off of that, gentlemen, and Avery, I'll start with you, and then, Maggie, your thoughts about the Timmy Kispert aspect of this. Uh, how important will those two be, obviously, with Suggs, three against three in terms of Baylor's big three, but specifically the Kispert-Timmy aspect of things? Yeah, when you think about Kispert, it's all about spreading the floor. And he does an unbelievable job of moving without the ball. And that's one of the underrated parts of Kispert's game is his back cuts and even some of the underneath out-of-bounds situations. But that Drew Timmy uh, high-low pass, you know, hitting Kispert for three-point shots, back cuts to the basket, dribble handoffs. I just love the way this kid moves without the ball. And uh, he has an edge about him. He has what my son would call us, not confidence, but swag. I'm learning what swag is. So he has that swagger, and I, I think that gives uh, – Gonzaga a lot more space for Suggs and Drew Timmy to operate inside and outside. Let me tell you something. When this man walks onto the set, he's carrying swag. So I don't <laughs> want to hear he doesn't know what swag is, okay? He's the definition of it here at HQ. I do think that Kispert's going to be big in this game alongside Timmy. But Kispert, he's the WCC player of the year. And he's had, a, he's had a couple of games here where he has had slow starts. I still think whenever the ball is in his hands, that is when you have opposing coaches. There's a little bit of, a little bit of, of fright in there in their heart because they know that he is able and capable of hitting from uh, from deep at, at really any given moment. So Kispert's performance in this one, I just can't help but wonder if, if for all the pub that Suggs has received and rightfully so, will he maybe be held in check by Mitchell? Uh, is Timmy going to be held in check a little bit by Vidal? Uh, you're not going to hold everyone on Gonzaga in check. It's just not going to happen. Kispert in this spot might he be the guy that comes up big? They may need him uh, to do that in order to get past the Baylor team. That's just so multifaceted defensively. And, and I don't know if, if they're going to put, like, Vital can cover Kispert, by the way. If they're going to do that, that's going to open up Timmy. But I, just, I don't think that's going to be the case because Timmy's been so reliable down low that I think Kispert becomes, I don't want to say an X factor because he's better than that. We, we tend to, to assign that label to players that aren't, you know, the top one or two options on their team. But I do think Kispert's going to need to show up here. If, if he doesn't have a big game, that could be some real trouble for the Zags. All right, these two teams scheduled to play back on December 5th. It did not happen because of COVID issues, but we get it in Indy where you guys are at for the national championship game. It is pick time, gentlemen. I'm Matt, I'll start with you. Who wins this game tonight and why? 
Gonzaga is going to win the game because it's got more options offensively. It's the best two-point shooting team in the history of college basketball. I'm going to say that again. There's never been a team that's been better from two-point range in the history of the game than Gonzaga. I think it's got just enough. It's going to be able to dictate pace. Baylor's, Baylor can adapt to Gonzaga's pace, but I think ultimately, ultimately, I think that it's going to be in Gonzaga's favor. Baylor is going to cover this number. I think it's going to be close down the stretch, but not ultra dramatic. So I've got Gonzaga. 84-81, and I've actually got Kispert having the best night of any Bulldog on the floor. Wow. Um, on tomorrow, uh, the Baylor Bears, they're going to land at DFW Airport, uh, which is about 90 miles north of Waco. <laughs> and when they land on tomorrow, the Baylor Bears, they're going to have that trophy. Uh, they're going to win this game. I think it's going to be a very close game, probably somewhere in the high 70s. But uh, I, I have Baylor winning this game by three points tonight. Uh, Jared Butler is going to be the MVP of this game. You know, he's going to score somewhere around 24 points. Davion Mitchell is going to be outstanding defensively against Suggs. I agree with Matt. I really think uh, Vital is going to have an outstanding night because I don't know if Drew Timmy's going to touch the ball in the post as much as he did uh, in, in the semifinal game because of the Baylor fronts and their scouting report. Uh, Jerome Tang, their associate head coach, is an outstanding guy in getting their team ready to play. So I'm going with the Baylor Bears to take this championship back to Waco, Texas. All right, both are guys on up his sides, but both predicting a close game between Baylor and Gonzaga. Thanks to Avery Johnson at Mort Matt Norlander at the Final Four in Indianapolis. Catch Matt and Gary Parrish, of course, on the Ion College Basketball Pod. The beautiful shot of Lucas Oil Stadium tips off tonight, 920 Eastern on CBS. By the way, the two combined losses by Baylor and Gonzaga will tie the fewest ever by two teams entering the title game in the NCAA tournament. The others with two came in 1957 between North Carolina and Kansas, and then in 1966 with Texas Western and Kentucky. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.